In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the distribute method in GSAP 3. Distribute allows you to distribute a range of values across elements in an array. Right now, we have a bunch of bars that have their Y scale value distributed linearly. All right. What we can do, though, with distribute is we can change the ease that's applied to the distribution. And we can also change the direction from which that ease is applied. And this gives us a wide variety of effects that we can achieve. As cool as it is watching these bars sort of change shape, I think this works really well when applied to text effects. Look what happens when we just change the ease applied to distribute different Y values to the starting positions of each letter inside this word here. Using the distribute method is the secret sauce to one of my favorite text effects called the rubber bander. In this demo here, I'm using the distribute method to affect the scale and the position of each character. I'll show you exactly how to build this effect in the next video. But first, we're going to start slow and just go over the basic configurations of the distribute method. Let's go. All right, so I have this code pen demo set up where I have a bunch of these vertical bars over here. And I have the gsap.set that's setting their scale y to 0.5. So each of them are all the same height. Well, what I'm going to do is, you know, I want to have it so that maybe they progressively get taller, okay? So instead of setting them each to 0.5, I'm going to tap into GSAP's function-based value features and this utility function called distribute. So I'm going to do gsap.utils.distribute. And inside of this function, there's a config object that I'm going to use to set a few different parameters. The first thing I'm going to do is set the base value and this is going to be the lowest value that can be applied to any of the scale y properties. So for now I'll just stick it to zero and for the amount that means how much we can add to that base value. So here maybe I'll just do 0.5 and then when I run this watch what happens. You're going to see that we get a linear distribution of bars starting with a scale y of 0 going all the way up to 0 0.5. If I set the base amount to 0 0.25 and run again, you'll see that the lowest bar has a value of 0 0.25 and they go all the way up to 0 0.75 because we're adding 0 0.5 to 0 0.25. So whenever you use distribute, you're going to want to have at least the base and the amount set. Now, if we don't want a linear distribution here, you'll notice that it's all happening in a very uh, straight angled line here. We can use an ease. Now, if you've been watching my videos, you've seen me use eases for tons of different things for selecting random numbers to changing the start times on staggered tweens. But here we're going to use an ease to distribute these values. So let's just say ease and I'll do a power one. So when I do that, we're going to get a little bit of an arc here. There we go. And you can see it looks like a power one out ease. It flattens out towards the end here because there's less change. If we change that to a power one dot in, we're going to have it arc in the beginning or be flat in the beginning, I should say, and then get increasingly steep towards the end here. If I want to make that more extreme, you know, I can go to a power four if I want. I could even use an elastic ease or a bounce ease to get some odd things. Another property I can set here is the direction. All right. So using the word from, I can say I want these to cut the ease to be applied from the center possibly. And then if we do that, you're going to see that the base amount is in the center and the ease is applied towards the edges. So values in the center are going to be 0.25. And as we go towards the edges, we're going to get all the way up to 0.75. Maybe I'll make this like a power two. And then I can go to maybe let's go from the edges. And if I hit run, you're going to see now that we're going to be low at the edges and the ease is going to be applied toward the center. Hey there, quick interruption. If you've watched this far, I'm guessing you like this video. If you want more like it, check out GSAP 3 Beyond the Basics. It's got this video in there, and I embed code pen demos that you can play with. This one here, we can actually edit it inside the page. I can change a value and then hit the rerun button, and you can see how that code change affects the graph. Scrolling on down, you get access to all the tools that I use to demonstrate this stuff 
in my videos. Scrolling on down more, you also get this fun one to play with. And of course, as a student, you get everything. So you wanna learn how to do the rubber band effect? No problem, I've got the rubber bander video here and also a code pen demo where you can edit it, you can check out the JavaScript code and learn exactly how it's made. So if you wanna learn all I know about the GreenSock animation platform, check it out. New content is added regularly. Let's get back to the show. Now here I'm just using a set, but this can also apply to an animation. So I can just set this over to a two tween instead of a set. And then when I run, all of these bars are gonna animate from their natural scale of one to whatever I put inside the config options for this distributed function. Right now I have the transform origin set to the bottom so that you can clearly see that the base value is 0.25 and we're adding on an amount of 0.5 getting us to 0.75. But you can get some really interesting effects if you change that transform origin. I'm gonna set the transform origin for each bar to be its center. Now we're still gonna use that distribution with the same values, but we're gonna just get a different visual effect at the end because now everything is going to be animating towards the center of those bars or transforming around the center. Maybe I'll give that base a value of zero so that our skinniest bars here on the end are gonna have a scale Y of zero. So it's pretty cool. If you were given you know, 50 bars and you had to scale them in this fashion, it'd be pretty difficult without this handy distribute method. Now, what I wanna show you before I go is that I can take all of this stuff outside of the tween here, and since it's a function-based value, I can say, hey, you know what? Let end equal, and then I can create a reference to the function that gets returned by the distribute function, and now my scale y value can just be end. So basically what we're doing here is we're creating a reusable configuration for this type of distribution. So let me just run and it should work exactly the same. Awesome. And now that I've discussed the basic concepts, talking about base, amount, ease, and from, let's jump over to a visualizer so you can just play around with the stuff and see what it does. All right, here I have a visualizer that's a bit more interactive. So instead of typing the code, you can just change the ease value with this select menu here. If you wanna change the direction, you can set it to end, you can go to center, you can go to edges, and just so you can see how this stuff is applied. Now, if you want a monkey with the uh, base and the amount, you can go over to the code and there's this tween set up somewhere in all that code where you could set the base to something like 0.25 and maybe the amount is only going to be, I don't know, 0. 25 as well and then when you run you're going to see that the base value is 0 0.25 and it only applies a maximum value of 0 0.5 and that stuff is still going to work where we can twist the stuff around now i've only been showing you how to change the scale y of something using this distribute function because it's very easy to map it to uh, an actual ease curve but we can apply this to rotation position opacity any property we can dream up so let's see another visualizer. So in this one here, instead of just animating the scale Y of some bars, I'm also animating the Y property of some text. So you can get some really interesting effects as you change the ease and the direction that it's being applied. So you don't have to watch me play with this for a half hour. I'll let you mess around with it. Links are below. But speaking of text effects, here's the rubber bander, all right? This one's pretty cool. So I'm doing two different distributions. One is for the X property of the text, which makes it stretch out and go to the right and to the left, and another one for the scale. So what I'll do in the next video is walk you through this, and then you can have this demo to play with as well. And if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and tell your friends. It helps a lot. Happy animating.